In this video, I want to start talking about volumes of revolution. Specifically, in this video, we're going to talk about volumes of revolution using the method of cross sections. We're going to talk all about what that means here. The basic problem is that I've got some function, I don't know what it is, I'll just call it f of x, and if you can imagine, I'm going to take this function and I'm going to revolve it, or I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis, the three-dimensionally. So if you can imagine this function coming out of the whiteboard, going around, going through the whiteboard, and coming back to where it was. It would make sort of this cone-looking thing, I guess. You can imagine. It would make this three-dimensional kind of ice cream cone. And I want to know what's the volume of that thing? What's the volume of that cone that I've created? So the way we do this for this method is we start simply. Well, maybe I don't know how to find the volume of that cone thing, but something that I do know how to find the volume of, or rather the area of, is a circle. A circle is pretty easy to find the area of. So if you can imagine, let me just draw a circle in here. And this is going to be hard for me to do, but let me just pretend, <laughs> bear with me, pretend that this is just a circle in there. So it's, it's, lay, it's got to be stretched out so you can see it. But this is a circle. Bear with me. What's the area of that circle? Well, the area of that circle, of course, is pi r squared. We all know that. The area of a circle is pi r squared. But what's the radius of this circle? What's, what's the radius? Well, the radius is from the center to the edge, right? And it looks like the radius starts at the x-axis and then goes up however high this function is. So the radius is just however far we are in the y direction. Or just as equivalently, you could say that's however high we are in the f of x direction. So I don't care whether you call it y or whether you call it f of x, same thing. Now that's the area of just that single circle. How much volume does a single circle have? Well, it doesn't have any volume. But if you can imagine me doing this circle and laying another one on top of it and another one on top of it and another one on top of it, on top of it as many times as it took. In fact, if I did it an infinite number of times, if I stacked up all of these circles, that would give me the volume of this thing I want. And how do I add up a bunch of infinite things? Well, of course, we do it by integrating. So the volume of this thing will be the integration from wherever you're stopping, or from wherever, wherever you're starting to wherever you're stopping, of this thing right here that I just came up with. It's just the circle. I'm just adding up a bunch of circles. And if I'm adding in the x direction, I need to add a dx. That's a very that's not a very rigorous um proof of this, but that's this is where the idea comes from. So let's just do a quick example. And uh let's just say that this function that I came up with was the square root of x, and let's just say a was zero, that looks like zero, and b was one. So I want to find the volume of revolution of the square root of x from 0 to 1 um, revolving around the x-axis. What volume would that make? And it would be like, this would be filled in. But, well, I'll just use this equation. So the volume is going to be the integral from 0 to 1, definite integral, of pi f of x. Well, f of x is the square root of x, and I have to square that because it's pi radius squared dx 
That's not too bad. Uh, pi is a constant, so I can pull the constant out front. If I square a square root, the square root side goes away. And now that's a pretty easy definite integral to do, I think. Uh, just add one to the power, divide by the new power, evaluate from zero to one by the fundamental theorem of calculus. That'll be pi. I plug in one squared minus, well, if I plug in zero, zero squared is zero. So that's going to go away. And all I'm going to be left with is pi times one or pi over two. That's a nice little answer for you. So there's your introduction to how to do volumes of revolution by cross sections. Basically, you're summing up a whole bunch of circles and that's where the formula comes from. What you need to remember, it's the integral from a to b of pi of f of x squared dx, or sometimes the professors give it integral a to b pi y squared dx, but they mean the exact same thing based on what I set up here. Okay, I hope you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe. I put new videos up every single day and have a great day yourself.